All right, everybody, we are live. Welcome, everybody, to episode number 86 of Sports Cards Live. Tonight is a double header. It is Saturday night. Today is March the 20th. My name is Jeremy Lee. I want to mention I just had up the Stop Asian Hate uh, overlay. You know, I don't usually get into political issues. This isn't political, it's humanitarian. And I just want to support not only the Asian community, but uh, the Asian the Asian sector of our hobby and everyone who is a big part of it. So that's why we did that. We're going to have a special overlay for the episode tonight. I want to thank last Saturday's guest, Paul Lesko, for his legal landscape review. That was great. We covered a whole bunch of topics. Check that out. That is on the uh, Sports Cards Live channel in the archives. It'll be there for a while. So check that out. It'll be there forever, actually. I want to let you know next Saturday's guest, Billy Celio, product manager at Upper Deck, will be back again to join us. We're going to talk about what's going on there with upcoming products, among more things. I want to welcome all new viewers to the channel. If you are new here, we appreciate you. Please subscribe to the channel. We just hit 2,450 subscribers, almost at the 2,500 milestone. I want to thank all subscribers who have been with us, new from the beginning. And again, if you just got here, Hit that subscribe button, join us. We do bring what I like to think are the best guests in the hobby content space. I want to shout out the Big Three Hockey on Instagram. Give them a follow. They support the channel and they showcase the finest singles in the hobby on their Instagram page. I want to shout out all the podcast listeners. The podcast audience has been growing. Thankful for you. Uh, you know, I know that you can't see what's going on all the time, especially when we're talking about cards that we're showing on the show, but we do appreciate you and thank you for being loyal listeners. Feel free, everybody, to join the Sports Cards Live Facebook group by the same name, Sports Cards Live. Just come on in, hit the join, and uh, you'll need to be admitted. Just mention Sports Cards Live or Jeremy as a reference, and we will make sure to get you into that. Also, join us later tonight at 1145 Eastern, part two of the double header. My guest will be Rodman Martinez. He is a very, he's an awesome Michael Jordan collector from Honduras. I'm excited to have him on later on tonight. All right, let's get to tonight's guest who got started in the hobby when his dad and his dad's friend went shack hunting, Shaquille O'Neal hunting in 1992. He focused on Chris Webber and Penny Hardaway. He collected from the height of the 90s through to the end of the century, the end of the millennium, and took a break until he came back briefly in 2008. He slowed down again, and he came back with a vengeance in 2018. By July of 2019, he found Sports Card Investor on YouTube, and by March of 2020, he became part of their team. His favorite teams are the Detroit Lions, Red Wings, Pistons, and Tigers. His favorite athletes are... Barry Sanders, John Stockton, Andre Drummond, and Albert Pujols, originally from and currently residing in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Let's bring him out. Tyler Nethercott, welcome to episode 86 of Sports Cards Live. How are you doing tonight, my friend? Hi, Jeremy. So happy to be here. This is awesome. I have, um, I can't say exactly what episode I found Sports Cards Live. I think it was in the earlier days, like maybe around episode 10. And um, uh, I mentioned to you before, I've been following, you know, when I can off and on, sometimes Saturday nights gets a little late for me on the Eastern time zone, but um, I, I love the show and I loved the episode with Patrick, Bet David, and I'm, I'm really excited to be on tonight. Oh, thanks, man. It's uh, it's great to have you. I appreciate those kind words. I love the, I love the blue background you have. It uh, It's consistent with the brand of your new channel, which we'll get to a little bit later, but let, you know, I want... I want everybody to get to know you a little bit. You are, I mean, sports card investor, the face of SCI has been Jeff Wilson. Uh, I know his sister is involved now. And uh, and and now you are starting to have more of a, 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 a presence as a face of, of the brand and of Market Movers, the tool itself. So why don't we uh, let the audience get to know you a little bit. Let's hear a little bit about your history and the hobby right up to when you started uh, with Sports Card Investor. Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Um, so as you mentioned, my my first experience with sports cards was about when I was seven years old. Uh, the Shaq rookie craze was happening and uh, my dad's friend somehow got into sports cards. I was still so young. I, I don't even remember what sets he was bringing home, but I do remember him coming home with sports cards and opening packs and saying, we're looking for Shaquille O'Neal. We're looking for Shaquille O'Neal. And even though I had it ingrained hardwired into me that we were Pistons fans, 
Um, and I, 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 would, I had just missed those golden years of the bad boys era, you know, before they started to fall apart. And um, so that kind of got me turned on to being like an Orlando Magic fan too when I was young, because it was all about Shaq. And then the next year it was all about Penny Hardaway. And, you know, Chris Weber, like you mentioned, he was a big, he was one of the big ones too, got traded for Penny in the, in the draft. And um, Penny was my big primary PC all the way through the nineties. I, I sort of no regrets, but remember trading all of my Michael Jordan cards to my friend Elliot for his Penny Hardaway's, Chris Weber's, Gary Payton cards, basically anybody but Jordan. And when you grow up in a Pistons household, you grow up rooting for anyone but the Bulls and Michael Jordan, basically. So I was shedding many tears every year when the Pacers got knocked out or when they beat the, you know, the the Jazz or when they beat the Sonics. And so um, I, I, I would say the height of my collecting was like 96, 97. And in my opinion, like it was, some of it was circumstantial, just age. I was sixth, seventh grade, but it was like the height, the best possible time to be at the height of your collecting as a child, because Fleer and Arena Design started innovating like crazy. There were all these awesome inserts coming out. Tops was doing cool stuff and um, obviously Chrome released. And so there was just a lot of awesome, awesome stuff happening. I mostly collected basketball cards when I was when I was younger. I had some football cards and I was a massive Barry Sanders fan and was crushed when he retired. It's the only thing I I can say that I didn't like about Barry Sanders in my entire life. Um, and so I collected all the way through probably until 1999. Uh, maybe up till 2000. And then I got into high school and just uh, shifted priorities into sports and academics and everything. When I got out of college, um, I was uh, I was waiting to get into the military and I uh, just started dabbling back into cards. I found you know some packs at like Walmart or Target, some retail store. And I was like, oh yeah, I got a, this is fun, just nostalgia. And it got me hooked like right away again. And, you know, unfortunately at the time, like I was in no financial position to be spending money on sports cards. Then uh, I had to pay off my student loan debt and I had to, you know, worry about getting a job. So it was kind of like a six month thing where I did buy a good amount of 2008 stuff and had it shoved in boxes. And then, like you said, back in 2018, found my cards, started going through them again, kind of put them away back out in 2019. And I was like buying a Beckett price guide trying to figure out like online on their website what are all my cards worth and i just realized this isn't how i should be doing this um got networked kind of connected with a buddy at work who i just found out he was also like you know kind of buying and flipping some cards on ebay and it just got me hooked again and before i knew it i had stumbled across i mean tons of content not a ton of content at the time um i was really closely following uh jake roy you know 90s b-ball cards um, I've got one of his sweatshirts. I love watching his show. It's like, it's, I'm like living vicariously through him, watching all of his videos, opening these old packs and, you know, single packs and boxes and, um, and watching Josh Cardboard Chronicles and, and just uh, really, really, you know, enjoying kind of li living back down my, my childhood in that way. And then Jeff started Sports Card Investor and I stumbled across it um, first as a podcast, I think. And then I realized he had a YouTube channel too. And so I was following that very closely. I want to say it was like a few months later, he started the Discord and I jumped in there and was just really enjoying learning, um, getting caught up on all the different changes. Uh, and there was there was this massive learning curve. And I kind of became a moderator after a month or two. Um, you know, Jeff said, hey, you're pretty active. Would you like to be a moderator? I said, sure, why not? I'm in here all the time anyway. So uh, I, it was in December that I sent Jeff a message in Discord and said, hey, you should really think about starting a, like an analytics tool, a price tool, because there's not really anything out there and checking all this stuff on PWCC and eBay directly is, is cumbersome. And he messaged me back and said, oh, your timing's really good. I'm actually working on something. We're kind of in development right now. Um, let's stay in touch. And so once the beta testing came around and was ready, uh, he gave me access, some of the other moderators and uh, you know a small group of people and I just started going in there and, you know, testing out everything. And my background um, for for the first five years of my career, actually the first seven years was in finance, banking, um, risk analysis. And then the last five years had been spent in software development, project management, um, you know, quality and testing. So it was kind of like this perfect merger. And so I, um, I got in there, started submitting bug requests and tickets. And I mean, it was just Jeff at the time. 
running multiple other companies and then trying to field all, all this like, you know, crazy guys, uh, support tickets. And so he very quickly reached out and said, Hey, you, you seem like you have more of a background in this. Like, are you interested in working for me? And, um, I had a, I had a very solid job. I've got a young family. So I, I kind of ho hummed over it and then, um, joined on, on just on a contract basis, working like 20 hours a week in, in my spare time for him. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, fortunately, unfortunately in May of last year, uh, due to COVID, the company I was working for got heavily impacted by that. And they, they had massive layoffs and I was part of that. Um, the fortunate is I was able to join sports card investor, uh, full-time and starting in August. Um, so I kind of kept working through the summer and then I joined full-time officially in August. And so I have been working on our market movers tool. Uh, I work on, you know, customer support and obviously we're spinning out the channel, um, doing a few more guest appearances on the main SCI YouTube channel as well and having fun with that. So, um, it's been an awesome, awesome opportunity for me and I, I couldn't really be happier. Right on, Matt. It's a great story. Um, so are you collecting today? Are you still out there shopping for cards? And uh, and to what extent do you use the market movers tool to help you make those decisions? Yeah, I mean, I so one of my primary PCs, when I got back into the hobby, I was like, okay, um, I love my penny collection and I, and I wanted to start building up kind of a Grant Hill collection. I did that, but I also wanted a big you know, I wanted a, a current player. I wanted somebody that I could focus on in the current market. And the the Pistons, unfortunately, haven't been very good. They've been, you know, stunningly mediocre at best for the last decade. Uh, Andre Drummond was by far their best player most consistently since he was drafted in 2012. And so I was like, oh, I wonder. And I started looking at Drummond cards and I was on like ComC and seeing that I could buy like almost an entire prism rainbow of Andre Drummond for like 80 bucks. I mean, short of the one on ones. And I was like, this guy's stuff is way too cheap. This is awesome. So I started just amassing Andre Drummond cards. And then I got onto Instagram, which I had never used before and posting pictures and getting connected. Um, you know, I, I now I think pretty confidently have the most comprehensive biggest Andre Drummond collection in the world. Um, and I love it. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. So that's like my primary, like literally purely PC, not interested in selling those cards. They're not investments. Uh, kind of like, kind of like Jeff with his Tim Tebow cards. It's like, these are, these are staying in my PC. They're not going anywhere. And, uh, I collect a lot of other stuff. I honestly say I have a bit of a problem because I like sports cards so much and I'm so fascinated by the aesthetics of them and the rarity and the different and the photography and everything that sometimes letting go of cards that I buy, like I don't just buy cards easily for investments. I'm not, I'm not typically just buying silvers and base cards and then waiting to flip them. I kind of like to buy stuff that I'm interested in. That way, if the player tanks, if some scandal happens or they get a bad injury, I'm not like really frustrated if I'm stuck with the card. So uh, I I collect a lot of stuff. I buy Barry Sanders stuff. I buy, I mean, I, I have a very, very, very eclectic uh, collection and kind of across the board. I do some set chasing, all kinds of stuff. Right on. I, I love to hear that, you know, even though you work at Sports Card Investor, you work for an analytics uh, tool or you, you help develop the analytics tool, you are a true collector. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk lately in the hobby. We're going to get to this later on. When we talk about collecting versus investing. There's a lot of talk about in the hobby about, you know, what are you? Are you a collector? Are you an investor? Are you a dealer? Are you a flipper? It's like we can be combinations of things. You, you're, you don't need to be one or the other. So I think that that's really awesome. You mentioned uh, you were living vicariously through Jake Roy, uh, 90s b-ball collector. He, I just want to mention if anyone caught that, he uh, he was he was my guest on episode number 51 of the show back on October 3rd. So check that out. And yeah, he's he I love his uh, his opening on his videos on his channel is, you know, the, the most passionate hobby content on, on the internet, which, uh, you know, he's, he certainly is a passionate guy. It's pretty awesome. And you mentioned the bad boys, the Pistons. I, I grew up in Winnipeg, which is north of North Dakota, for anybody who doesn't know. And in the 80s, you know, our, our a lot of, our, I forget which feed it was, but it was Detroit. So I kind of grew up as a Pistons fan myself and was a bit, you know, Isaiah Thomas was the guy that I wanted to collect back in the day. That was the card I wanted from 86 Flair over the MJ. So, yeah. you know, too bad for me. It took until several years later to get a Michael Jordan rookie, but I'm with you on the Pistons. Although I haven't been, a, I haven't been a fan of, the, I kind of got away from that 
in the early to mid '90s. So I'm not. I don't. I don't cheer for them anymore. But nothing against them uh, as well. Okay, before we dive into the next section, let's see, see who we have with us. We got great viewership so far. We got Jordan Riker is here. Love that, Jordan. Are my two favorite people in the hobby. Very nice. Thank you very much. He also wants to know what time is the Drummond Nebula giveaway. Tyler, is that a card that you own? That's a uh, that's a little bit of an inside joke. Uh, uh, Jordan was asking that on every one of our member live streams, and and I've got both actually. I had my little stack here for later if we get to it, but I actually have both Andre Drummond Nebulas, one of ones. My probably my two favorite cards, um, and uh, so he always jokes with, with me. He's, he, he wants, wants you to nebula. wants you to do a giveaway on one of them. I don't see that happening, but hey, Jordan, oh, keep man. on trying, keep on trying. Uh, Rocco, good evening to you. Yes, double duty day for myself. It's going to be a, a fun night. Corey Carr, good evening. Just basketball cards, good evening to you. We got Brian Kingsley. Brian caught you on Carlos last night. Good to see you. Cardboard Max, good evening to you. We got Frank Ostella, happy to have you. And we've got sports cards is early for once. Great to have you on time. We'll, we'll note that in the book. Gold star for you. Uh, Jeff McMahon, good evening. Facebook user, give them the, the, the fist pump. I, I wish Facebook would, would clean this up and let us know who they who the uh, who the viewers are. But happy to have you nonetheless. Steve, sir, good evening. We got Legion back in the house. Great to see you. Dennis, good evening. Happy to have you. Terry Fortune in the house. 90s is here. Lowell is here. There's Dustin, personal finance dad. Happy to see you, buddy. Victor is here. All-time greats. Well, guys, check out these channels. Check out the personal finance dad. Check out all-time greats blog. couple of my favorites. Uh, Lowell's uh, saying Detroit. Hey, look at his logo. There we yeah, go. The yeah. Pistons. There you go. There you go. Steve, sir, good evening to you. Frank's happy to see the fellow Michigander. Billy will be my guest next Saturday, says Tyler is my new favorite guest. You're going to have back-to-back -back Michigander guests. Go GVSU Lakers. I live I live uh, 10 minutes from GVSU. Right on. Yes. Uh, Victor says, a fellow Shaq Diesel collector. Love it. Get on the big conductor train. All aboard. Go Ferris Bulldogs. Billy Celio. Good evening to you, Michael Ham. Great to have you. Daniel's here. Daniel, good to see you all. As always, Card Collector says, first time watching live. I usually podcast the show throughout the week, but this is the way to go. Well, thank you so much. Love having you, Card Collector 1982. We got Michael Ziggy No in the house. Good evening to you, Corey Carr. That's too funny. He's casting this channel throughout his house to everybody. Right on. Uh, Michael says, Teapot, do you have a new PC piston to collect now? Yeah. What, who do you collect now on the pistons? I'm kind of waiting to see what happens, but I mean, I'm really excited that they finally are kind of blowing things up. It needed to happen years ago. And, and I knew last year they were going to have to trade Drummond. I didn't want to see it happen. They didn't get anything for him, which frustrated me, but I'm waiting. I'm sort of sitting and wait. Um, I'm, I, I hope Killian Hayes is going to be good. Um, I studied French in school and lived in France for six months. So I like the Dumbuya and Killian Hayes connection there. I've got probably the most cards are any of Seku Dumbuya right now of any of the young guys. Right on, right on. Victor says, love the new banner. Thanks, Victor. Doing this, uh, this Saturday, you know, the, the tragic events in Atlanta, uh, during this past week broke my heart. You know, I'm just going to go there for one sec, uh, Tyler. I saw, you know, on the news, um, a mother or, or a, a young two-year-old or however old the kid was lost lost his or her mother in the, in the tragic events. And you know, I'm a father of a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and literally brought tears to my eyes. And uh, I don't know, I just wanted to pay tribute uh, tonight on 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 the channel on on the two episodes to the uh, the victims and just to support the community really is, is what that is. So uh, thank you, Victor. Appreciate that. Frank says Pistons have some good young players now. Dexflow, I will sign that petition to get Teapot back on the forecast. <laughs> Lee Haskins, not, we always start at 10 o'clock Eastern, Lee, uh, for, the, for the first show and the second show starts, you know, about two hours later, as always. Matt says, Jeremy, I went to a big card show in, area, in my area, spent a bunch of money on some cheap cards. Good for you, good for you. Happy to see people not having to only acquire, you know, grails and uh, five-figure cards, a four five-figure cards all the time. Awesome. Here we go. A fan of Victor's. Colin Murray, good evening to you. Jeremy Pringle, good evening to you. And Carlos Finero, hello, a.k.a. Crosby Collector. All right. Good stuff. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Happy to have you all. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, give us a subscribe. I also want to point out on the ticker right now, 
Uh, you can see if you want to follow the Market Movers channel, which is Tyler's channel on YouTube, it is called Market Movers by Sports Card Investor. And if you are not yet following Tyler on Instagram, at Drummond Card Collector. Okay. I want to know, and I think some people might want to know, what is it like working with Jeff Wilson? Hello, working with Jeff Wilson. <laughs> Even the hello is polarizing internally. Um <laughs> I yeah, you know, internally it's, polarized. Oh yeah. I mean, it. I mean, it's a branding, right? It's, it's, and at this point you can't get rid of it. I mean, it's people, it's, you love it or you hate it, but, um, but it's Jeff too. But I, I will say, you know, I, I, I didn't know Jeff, like I just knew him through the show. Right. And he's definitely one to, um, more put on, like he, he has like a, like a recording presence. Right. Like I tend to, I gotta like psych myself up because I'm I tend to just be the same same guy all the time, you know. Like I can get real excited and enthusiastic. Don't get me wrong, but Jeff's background—I mean, he, he went to school for journalism, broadcasting. Um, obviously, his sister does it, so something must run in the family in that regard. And um, they just know how to turn it on. And and uh, so when you see that side of Jeff, it's like okay, like there's some like Tony Robbins, like some you know Dale Carnegie school of thought, like. If you act enthusiastic, you'll be enthusiastic, kind of thing here, and and that's really all the all the world gets to see for the most part. And unfortunately, the national got canceled last year. People don't get an opportunity to actually like come up and shake your hand and say hello and get to know you face to face, which is a, a bit of a different thing. Once I started getting to know Jeff, like the first time that I interviewed with him, and then we started working together. I mean, I don't want to say he's a totally different person. It's not like a like a fraudulent fake thing, but. Um, the thing that I think would really surprise a lot of people is, is, and, um, and honestly kind of surprised me in a way I just didn't, is Jeff's like a really genuine guy and he really has a soft spot for the underdog. Like he cares about, um, trying to help people who, who need a leg up, you know, who kind of need, need an opportunity to flourish. Um, I think he does a lot more behind the scenes and in the community and networks that way than, than what he would ever let on. And, um, so, people kind of see sports card investor and they see investment at a time, like disrupting the hobby in, in so many ways. And they hear top fives and they, they get all these different ideas about maybe who Jeff is. And, um, it's not the Jeff that I know. It's not the Jeff that, that I've come to know. The Jeff that I know is, uh, been completely a man of his word and everything that we've arranged in terms of employment, very flexible, uh, very compassionate with different things that have happened, you know, in the world. And, and, um, so I just think it's really interesting. I hope that we get more opportunity to connect with people who maybe have that misconception. I I'm sure that there are a lot of people who, when we finally get to go to the national or Dallas card show or any of these bigger ones will want to come up and kind of see what he's all about. And I think they'll be, you know, I think they'll be maybe pleasantly surprised if that makes sense. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. And my biggest, my biggest regret right now is, um, I don't live in Atlanta. I live in Michigan and I think the team would certainly welcome me down there, but I've got some ties here and some other things in you know, my family's here. So, um, I wish I got to spend more time with the team that you know, more closely down there. Well, you know, if there's ever a time to work remotely, now is it, I think we're all getting more and more used to that. But, uh, you mentioned the team, you know, why don't we talk a bit about the team? I'm curious as to what the structure is at sports card investor. You know, when I first found Jeff Wilson and, and sports card investor, it was, a couple years ago, at least, I think it was right at the beginning, and I, I stumbled upon the chat. I was looking for content, and like you, I found very little. I found Jake, I found Josh and Cardboard Chronicles, I found Jeff and Sports Card Investor, and I remember he it was the first time he Jeff was uh, was calling out for people to uh, submit articles to to the uh, to the website. And I thought, well, that's kind of a cool thing, right? Because you're not just, you're actually, so, you're actually like crowdsourcing yeah. uh, content. And what, what a great way to, uh, what a great way to, to do it. I never submitted anything, but I was reading a few of them and, and uh, watched some of the videos. So, uh, but, you know, you mentioned that the hello is, is, you know, even internally polarizing. If I remember correctly and correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of started out you know, it, it grew, right? It grew. I think he, at one point he realized that, you know, I'm going to carry, I'm going to add more O's on, I'm going to make it last longer. And it becomes a bit of a branding thing. And if nothing else, it's memorable. 
and memorable is good as far as marketing goes. So, you know, uh, of course, people people uh, satirize it and you know have fun with it uh, out there. But who cares? It's fun. It's a uh, it's just part 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 of the brand. And uh, I like that. I like that the brand is not only Jeff anymore. As I mentioned earlier, you know, he's got his sister. Uh, he's not now. You are becoming a face of of the brand, sports card investor, and market movers. I think it's a good move. I think it's a, it's a wise move. The team, though, the team at Sports Card Investor. Can you tell us a little bit about what what is like? When I said, you know, I remember finding it. I didn't really know what it was, and I knew there was a channel. There were the articles, and then later on, Market Movers came out. But you know, the company itself. How big is it? How many people are are on the team? Um, what's the structure? Yeah, I mean, so just like a little bit about if you think about how Sports Card Investor was born. Um, really, it was born out of Jeff seeing the same exact thing that you just described that I described, which is where's all the content like this thing is going somewhere. And Jeff had that inkling early on when he first stumbled back upon it. And so he's like, if nobody's going to do this, I'm going to do it. And to your point, when he started the show, it was it was a basic setup like everybody. And and he I think he was more like, hello. I'm Jeff Wilson, you know, very like passive and uh, just wanted to talk about cards. And he was learning and he was throwing himself into it. And it just he was right at that beginning when when there was like the spark of the wildfire and it just it happened to start snowballing. And when he got going, I think, and getting more subscribers than what he thought, like I, he's told me, he's like, I thought I'd have like 10 people watch in the first week. And I had like, you know, 500 or something like crazy. And uh he, he started the community and that's really what it's all about. So if you look at sports card investor, it's really community driven. That's what the whole like goal is. It's to like bring people together and cards is something that people can all come together on. That's not political. That should, you know, it's a, it's a different, it's a hobby. It's a hobby. And that's the other half of it. Like I would say he very intelligently branded it sports card investor because I mean, geez, you type in investing in sports cards now and it's going to come up from an SEO perspective. But the hook line profit from the hobby you love, the synthesis of that is really like uh, fund your own PC. You're buying and selling things. You're upgrading over time. You're sort of learning this, you know, economics, whether you're seven years old or 70 years old. So um, as, as he built that community up more, he finally got it to the point where he's like, I can't do this all myself. Um, I definitely can't do this all myself. So he started hiring people. And so the first, the first people that he hired, um, he hired Kelly, who's our VP of marketing. And she's been an incredible, incredibly multi-talented asset to our team. Like she, she just, her background, I mean, even more than mine, I would say, and I feel like mine plugs in perfectly to what I'm doing is like, it all comes together uh, to, to do what we're doing. She's got a background in acting and in event planning and in digital marketing and all these things that just plugged in perfectly. So she, she's kind of our like major Swiss army knife who can do everything. And Kelly's got two people who report to her, um, Blake, who's our, um, who is our, uh, like graphic designer, content, you know, manager. And then Charles, who is our videographer who joined our team full time recently. He's the one who's responsible for my blue light and studio upgrades and everything. So shout out to Charles. Um, and uh, and then I've got two uh, guys who report to me, Tyler Holtzhammer, who we call affectionately call the hammer and uh, and Parker Michael, who is our director of data. So th both of those guys work closely with me. We're kind of like consider ourselves the back of the house working on the data. And then I also work closely with our entire lead an entire software development team uh, with a project manager. So we're actually hiring three more positions now. Um, one of them is is starting soon, a community manager role. They're going to be kind of responsible for all of our community, social, engaging with members, just more outreach. Um, and then we have a digital content producer role that's, that's also uh, going to be filled to help manage um, our written word content. So that's kind of the piece we see as like the biggest opportunity for us now. Uh, we still plan to do member submissions and to get those in, but at least that way we'll have like a formal editor and somebody who can, you know, more closely vet that stuff. And, um, and, uh, and then they'll also be publishing all kinds of content, like written content stuff to pair with the videos. Not everybody's got time to sit down and watch a 10 or a 15 or a 30 minute video. 
you know, people living in big cities, taking the subway to work, whatever. So we want to have more written stuff. We'll hopefully do some really cool long form deep dive articles and start an email newsletter too. And then um, the other role we've we've had posted is uh, for a, a UI UX designer. Um, we think there's a lot of opportunity to keep tweaking and making improvements within Market Movers to our website, um, to our SCI app, and um, so those are the that's the full full team structure. Um, I hope I'm not. For, I mean, we have other people who work like with us too, kind of an adjunct and and um, and support us in different ways too, just not on the full time team. Right, contract type people that are yeah. in and out. Yeah, awesome. Okay, well, that it's interesting, right? I mean, we only we only know what we see front facing. It's nice to know what goes on under the hood, if you will. So thanks for, for bringing us up to speed. I'm uh, gonna go back to a few, oh, actually, before I go back to some more comments, I just wanna, you know, uh, you mentioned Kelly, uh, who is your VP of marketing. I had, I, there, there was a, a networking event at the Beckett Industry Summit uh, back in, I think it was October, you know, virtual, uh, virtual networking and her and I ended up in the same room together. I think you had three minutes to talk. And in that three minutes, we managed to arrange to, to have Jeff come on, on my show, which he was on, a little bit later, uh, we talked about you, maybe getting you on, and and here we are. But yeah, she's been really great to work with behind the scenes and arranging these things. So shout out to Kelly for all of her help uh, doing all that. I want to say uh, welcome to Charles. It's great to have you, uh, Tyson. What's up? Thank Tyson. I'm glad you listened to the podcast. Great to have you live. I always wonder the people that listen to the podcast versus watching live. It's nice to see some come over to the live show. So welcome to you, Tyson Lee, Isikovich. Uh, I love Jordan makes me laugh. That was an impressively efficient scroll through the con. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate that. Charles said SCI needs to do more Marvel cards. Um, let's keep on going here. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate that. Jordan will be at the National to meet everybody. Thank you, peeps. Appreciate that. Um, what else we got? My, Ziggy says, great words on Jeff. I can second that. He's one of the best guys in the hobby. Lots of haters out there, full of envy in my opinion. Yeah, it could be some some haters just hate for the hate for sport. Doesn't mean they're envious. Some just some people just hate for sport. It seems to be an easy thing to do. Uh, all right, card collector says I'm a huge fan of Jeff and his content. I watch this as much as I can. Quality stuff. Cardboard Max says SCI is great for the hobby. Got sports market movers is a great tool. A lot lots of lots of good stuff for market movers and SCI here. Cardboard Max says it's been fun to watch what Jeff has done with his channel since the beginning. Yeah, it's always fun to watch somebody start early and, and evolve and get better as time goes on. So, uh, and add different different aspects to their to their content and their services. This must be my man, Richie out of New York. Good evening to you, my brother. Uh, Jordan says, Jeremy and Tyler, what's your favorite recent sports card pickup? Sure, let's go off topic for a quick second, uh, Tyler. I wasn't expecting it, but um, anything that you can throw out there? Two of my favorites, had them sitting right here. Um, I, I got a bunch of stuff I picked up, but I finally landed a uh, an Andre Drummond 2017 blank slate from Court Kings. These were case hits. Uh, I have the I have the Giannis, which I picked up last year and got graded and is a 10, which I have for sale on eBay for the right the price I'd be willing to part on it, but it is one of my favorite cards at the same time. So this is one of my one of my favorites that I picked up. And then um, this uh, Priest Holmes, uh, one of one gold vinyl on card auto out of Spectra. Um, super cool. It's just a manufactured patch. But I got started actually um, as a Chiefs fan because of Priest Holmes, really, like very retired. And, and I was like a little bit frustrated with the Lions because I felt like it was their fault. Like they pushed him out of the league kind of. And so once, once I was uh, frustrated with them, I wanted another team to root for. I didn't want to be a bandwagon fan and like pick a really successful team. And my high school, uh, our high school mascot was the Red Arrows. And so I'm kind of a Midwestern guy. I was like the Chiefs, you know, Arrowhead Stadium, like makes sense. They're basically the same. And Priest Holmes was an absolute beast. So this was this was actually uh, a big pickup for me, a big one of my favorite PC cards. So. Right on. So while you were speaking, I brought up my most recent sports card pickup, uh, which was, came from eBay. Uh, so here it is. It's a Dale Howard Chuck exquisite, um, exquisite out of 25 patch auto. So nice. out of 25, pretty cool card for my 
that that goes into my same as your Drummond. You know, I don't collect them for for future value. I've been Dale Howard Chuck from Winnipeg, as I mentioned earlier, where I'm originally from. I've been collecting his cards as, as long as he's had them, and that would be it. Uh, Jordan, thanks for for that comment. Uh, PSA Slab Guy says, I agree. I got back into cards in part because of Jeff's videos. I'm sure there are many others like me. And, you know, that that's a good point because I'm sure there are many others like PSA Slab Guy simply because Jeff's done a great job of building his audience. You know, that, that subscriber count just keeps going up and up and up. I don't know what it's at exactly now, but it's well past 50,000, 60, 70,000 probably right now, right? I think it's around 68 or something. Maybe last time I checked. Yeah, we're trying to get it to 100 before the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, that, that's an amazing, uh, that's amazing reach. And uh, and I think it's important that, you know, that the, that the, that the content, the quality is, is good and high and it's always striving to improve. I think we all, everyone who's out there creating content, services, whatever it may be, we're always striving to improve. Nothing wrong with that, you know? And um, so, but that it's a huge audience. It's a huge reach. So uh, it, there's no doubt that there's, that PSA Slab Guy is not the only one that is, that, uh, that, that the SCI brand has influenced to get back into the hobby, for sure. Steve Elmore, good evening to you. Eric Stefano, good evening to you. Ziggy lets us know there's 81 watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you, if you don't mind, everybody. And again, if you are new to the channel, glad to have you. Please hit the uh, subscribe button. We do bring you... What I like to think is the best quality guests in the in ho, in the hobby content landscape. If you look at the archives on the Sports Cards Live YouTube channel, you will see the who's who of the hobby. So check that out. Please do, please do. Toa Hang is here. Glad to see Tyler. Nothing but respect for what Jeff has accomplished with SCI. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, God Sports on the Howard Chuck. Thank you, Tyson. <laughs> Jeff McMahon says the Lions frustrating their fans. Imagine that. Love it, love it. Steve Elmore says, eight thumbs down, tune out if you're a hater, as this is one of the best live shows, hands down. Thank you, Steve <laughs> Elmore. We'll take the thumbs downs. It's okay. You know, if you're here watching and you're giving a thumbs down, I'm going to take that as a compliment. And on behalf of, of my channel, myself, my program, Teapot, and the SCI team, you're here, you're watching. If you're going to thumbs down it and you don't want to be here, bye-bye. It's all good. All right. What else we got? Jordan says, Tyler's one of the 86 best guests you have ever had. Top notch. I love it. Thank you so much. MSC, good evening. Appreciate the thumbs up from you. Okay. So let me get back to my notes, which I dropped off when I showed that card. So let's move on now, uh, Tyler, a little bit about the new channel. The, the new channel that is by Sports Card Investor. I'm going to throw it back up on the ticker right now so people can check it out if they would like to. And just tell us a little bit about what, you're, what, what the purpose of the channel is and what you're doing with it. Yeah, I would say the, the primary purpose, the initial pur pur purpose is something that's long overdue, which is just more uh, active tutorials and training videos for market movers and how to use it. Um, you know, there's a lot of different features in market movers. And... Uh, one, I mentioned to you, we want to hire a UI UX person. Like some, some of it's just like intuitiveness. Is it easy to use? Is it, is it, is it accessible to people who are at all levels of what they're trying to do from an analytics and investment perspective? And so it was just to get content out. We drop a video every Saturday right now of different features from cradle to grave of what we've uh, built out and how to, how to use it. How does it work? Where do you click? Little tips and tricks. You know, how should I be thinking about this? I did a public a live stream, which I'll be doing once a month. Uh, we did one a few weeks ago, just Q&A with anybody who's got questions about market movers, questions about, you know, what do they want to chat about the sports card hobby? So it's just kind of an opportunity, like you said, for me to get, you know, more connected with our community, with the broader community too, another face to sports card investor. And um, I think uh, hopefully doing more deep dives, more analytical, you know, analysis, um, there's already, it's, it's actually awesome. There's, there's people who are, you know, members who already put out their awesome content, uh, you know, how they use market movers. You got, uh, Northeast Ohio sports cards. You've got a comeback card investor. You've got, um, oh man, it's like sports card, sports card collector. Uh, I think is, you know, there's people who are putting out awesome videos showing how they use market movers. And that's really the thing that is so exciting and, and um, edifying for me when I'm working on with our software development team every day and thinking, how can we keep making this better? Um, seeing, see, hearing the feedback from them. Hey, nice improvement. I noticed that when I was doing my weekly you know stream and that kind of stuff. So 
Um, so that's really the goal of the goal of the Market Movers channel. Okay, well, good stuff. I pre I appreciate that. I th I think it's you know whenever you get into a new tool, especially an analytics tool, they can be very complex. It's I think it's great what you're doing in terms of putting out. I don't, you know, they're not necessarily instructional videos, but but I guess they maybe they sort of are actually instructional type videos because you're literally sitting there, head in a circle, and then you're showing your screen and you're taking people through like one function at a time. I watched a couple of them to you know just to prepare for this, and I thought they were they were pretty they were pretty helpful overall. So I think it's going to go a long way. But it's it's nice that it's an instructional type video with a, a face and a voice and a person that you you know that's going to you know it's going to be there presenting to you versus just a, a what might sound like a robotic type of voice and, and just a presentation so i think it's the right way to go and i think we're going to see more and more um services not just in the hobby space but all over the place doing that if they aren't already um now there's one feature in market movers that, that i kind of asked you i asked you the other day i said you know I don't want to, we're not going to make, this isn't an infomercial for market movers, but I do want to highlight something about it that you're really proud of. And you mentioned the, the price ratio comparison. So I want to give you an opportunity to speak to what the price ratio comparisons are and what you really like about them and how people are using them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, so one thing I started doing early on uh, when I was first looking for cards to invest in was like, looking for opportunities where the prices between a PSA 10 and a PSA 9 uh, or a PSA 10 and a raw version like didn't make sense where there was opportunity I'll say now like there's no people ask me all the time and they'll send in things on discord and emails like you know what what what's the right ratio or what do I do with this and there's no like hard and fast ratio when it comes to how what's the multiplier for a PSA 10 over a PSA 9 pop counts are huge obviously in that if you've got you know pop 50 on a psa 10 and pop you know 5000 on the nines the ratio is going to be much bigger but on modern stuff ultra modern stuff things especially from the panini era in general it's hovering somewhere in the 3.65 3.75 sometimes 4x range and that's what i started learning before we ever put it in market movers was just looking for opportunities we talk a lot about like leading indicators and pace setters, whether it's a player or a product or a grade. And a lot of times you see the tens take off and start ramping up before the nines do. So there's like this arbitrage opportunity almost between the, the, the timing of all of it. So you start seeing the tens take off for a card. And not only can you time the nine, but you can also time the nine of the parallel that's slightly delayed from the silver too, and really get things at a discount. And so I was doing that well before we ever had the data to do it. And then we said, well, now we have the data and we're amassing it. Let's build it into market movers. So what we do is we do exactly that. We compare grade ratios and we do it for like cards. You know, So you take Luca's PSA 10 silver and his PSA 9 silver and we show you the ratio. And then we do the same thing for variations. So we keep all things constant, same player, same year set and grade and the variation differs. And then we show you What's his ratio of his silver to his base card or his silver to his ruby wave or whatever, however you want to look at it. And so we initially had those on um, popular card charts. So when you would run multiple cards, you could kind of see it. Now we built it into what we're calling intelligence reports where you can, you can select all your own prompts. You, you pick the report. What kind of ratio do you want to see? A, a grade ratio, a variation ratio, or a player ratio, which is the new one, which is really awesome in my opinion i have a lot of fun going in there and you get to see the comparisons so as an example with the player ratio um i ran one earlier today of luka Doncic to trey young and what it does is it pulls up all of the cards that we have in market movers for both of those guys where all other things are consistent right the set the grade the year and ever etc cetera, etc cetera. and it shows you the ratios and then it calculates the average across that whole data set the standard deviation and then we highlight the outliers. What we don't do is we don't say buy this one or sell this one. We just show you with a little exclamation point, this is an outlier based on the full data set, do with it what you want. And usually it's not a straightforward. So I'll give you an example. Luca over the entire data set was at like 4.7 
ax to Trey Young across all their cards from their 2018 rookie year. And when I looked at, uh, you know, some of the cards, though, they're all the way up at like eight, nine, 10 X. And so one of one of two things is true. Either either the Luca is too high or the tray is too low. Right. Like there's an opera. One of those things should be equaling out. Well, a really bizarre thing when I was looking at it earlier today is that the PSA 10 uh, or the, the, the PSA 10 Luca to the PSA 10 tray was like up around 8x but their PSA 9s was less than 2x. So then what I did is I went and looked at the chart and said, okay, something's off with a ratio here. Well, sure enough, Luca's PSA 10 to PSA 9 on his green prism rookie card is like is like only slightly over 2 or maybe even under 2. I can't remember the exact number. But I was looking at him on eBay and I was like, I don't really want to I don't have 2500. I need to sell some cards. I don't have $2500 to spend on a PSA 10 green Luca right now. But I'm telling you, they're, the ratio is way off. If you compare a green to the silver or the PSA 10 to the nine, it's off. So you start connecting the dots and piecing. This is like my kind of more nerdy analytical brain. I just love to geek out on this stuff and look for opportunities like that. And sometimes that's where the market hasn't reacted yet enough. It hasn't caught up yet enough, but more often than not, it will. Um, so that's it's, it's interesting because there's still a lot of this, like people do base it off of recent comps. like. And they sort of get ice like tunnel vision with that. And that's where these opportunities come from. But um, I'm I'm really excited. It's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to some of the things we can do with ratios and comparing, you know, opportunities across sets and other things like that. Um, so I'm 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 really, really excited about that. Okay, right on. I mean, it seems to me like you're not alone. People do use the tool to find opportunities. I think it's it's one of the benefits of analytical tools that are showing that. And uh you know, one thing the pop. Well, you mentioned the Luca, the Prism Green, and I'm I. What's sort of a newer trend in the hobby is this whole the concept of color matching, matching the color of the parallel or the variation to the player's uniform. And you, you know, the green often doesn't match unless it's a Celtics player sort of thing. And me, I wonder if that throws off the ratios because people want the they want the cards to be aesthetically pleasing, and I'm glad to see that. I'm glad that people want to buy cards that they like to look at. I think it's important, but, uh, but I, I thank you for that explanation. Um, very interesting and uh, it's certainly a very powerful tool. So we're going to go to a few more comments now. Uh, Card Collector says, what I think is great about Jeff's content is that the videos aren't too long. I bring this one up because if you've been a, a viewer of, of, of my channel, <laughs> my videos average at least two hours for the most part, right around the two hour mark. So I don't follow that uh, sort of YouTube standard or, or best practice. But nonetheless, I, he, he goes on to say, not that I wouldn't listen or watch it if they were longer, but I think it's a great model for sure, for sure. Uh, Just Baseball Cards says, love sports card investor market movers, great tools and legitimate content for the hobby. I enjoy watching and have enjoyed watching sports cards live for the first time as well. Great job. Well, thank you, Just Basketball Cards. Ricardo says, market movers, great tool. I need to see new mm -hmm. channel for wax chart tips. Mm -hmm. There's a good segue for us right there, uh, Tyler, into some of the new initiatives uh, that you guys are working on. Why don't you speak to, um, you know, what, what maybe expanding market movers into that? Yeah, sure. I mean, the the blessing and the curse of software development is you always have more ideas than you can accomplish. Like backlog is never a problem ever. You always are like, oh, we need to get this and it's competing priorities. And then and then you have these hard pauses to refactor your code and make sure performance is up to snuff and all of those kinds of things. The immediate stuff that we have planned, um, we have some charts coming out. We've been promising them for months coming out on my collection our portfolio tool. So you'll be able to actually visualize in a chart how your portfolio is doing over time. And then uh, the, the big things are we're building out, we're going to build out popular sealed wax. So right now we have chart any wax, which is sort of a mirror analog to our chart any card, which is the backstop. I'll say if you don't, if we haven't put the card yet into market movers, you can still chart and uh, you search it and visualize it over, over 90 days. Um, using eBay data, uh, data to, you know, see how that that card's been performing, and you can save those searches, and you can add those cards to your your portfolio and quickly track the price by clicking out to them. So what we want to do is add in, um, or we, rather, we we did that for sealed wax too, because wax has been growing in popularity and people investing a lot of money to that. Jeff's invested a ton of money into wax, 
And so right now it's just sort of a flex search. We're going to be formally adding wax into market movers so that, you know, cases and boxes and single packs of prism and FLIR and whatever it is, it'll work just like popular cards do. So we'll track that data over time, more than 90 days. And um, it'll be high quality, it'll be reliable data. You'll be able to really see what's going on, set price alerts with it. And we already added a My Sealed Wax collection. So it's separate from the card collection because the variables differ in terms of how you catalog it. But that's a big piece and that's gonna be, we're basically gonna build out a parallel of, uh, of our card database with Wax, all the same features and everything over time. And the other thing that's really big that people have been asking about for a long time is a native mobile app. So we're going to be we're going to be developing an app for Android and for Apple, um, and that should be out in the next few months. Um, and we'll 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 get a min, I'll call it a minimum viable product out at least with the primary features, and then we'll continue to build that out. And then the rest is um, tons of other big plans. Just which ones to do, which ones to do first. And our, honestly, our biggest priority, and it has been for a while, is just how do we get more cards and add more cards, more cards, more cards to popular card charts. And we've been ramping that up a ton um, over the last month, our pace is accelerating. And that's that's what people want at the end of the day. Like even more than bells and whistles, they just want to look up the card they're looking for. Okay, so lots of big things coming from uh, yourself and the team, great to hear. Okay, uh, Victor says a how to use channel is a fantastic idea. I, I certainly agree with that. Peeps, uh, yeah, Tyler is from Michigan. Uh, speak to it quickly, Tyler, do you collect hockey? I haven't collected hockey. I, I have bought, I'll call it out of uh, frustration and de desperation. Maybe that sounds bad to say. I have bought some upper deck and some other stuff at uh, the store because retail is so hard to find. Yeah. And, um, but uh, you know, the, like the Pistons, all the Detroit sports teams have been terrible the last 10 years. Um, so including the Red Wings. Um, so a lot of hockey fans around here. In fact, when I go to local card shows, I mean, it's like, baseball and hockey and yeah. then football and then basketball until That's recently. Cool. It's, it's really weird. Like I, I go even to my, one of the LCSs, like there's three of them now in the area, but one of them, I go there that they never have any basketball stuff probably cause it all gets snatched up, but um, there's huge. I mean, people love, love hockey in, in Michigan and West Michigan. So opposite from, you know, all the content we saw from the Dallas show and what else is going on the rest of, of, of the U S uh, sports cards review. Good evening to you. Uh, Ziggy says, uh, kudos on the new updates and best tool in the hobby ratios is amazing. Raw for raw to PSA 910 would like to see HGA, but I understand the challenge. Um, Jordan says, how do you balance data versus gut instinct when you make your investment decisions? Um, you know, we're going to do this one really quick, Tyler. Um, I go, I'm all gut myself. I'm all gut myself. I just, you know, that's how I go. So, uh, how about you, jo how about you, Tyler? I tend to be more data driven. Yeah, I use the tool. I look for opportunities. I, I, I love getting in there and starting at the price movements, which is the video we dropped today, and seeing what's down low, what's dropped a lot, and then I, and then I jump into ratios and look for comparisons and and find opportunities that way. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we got Brad in the house from the Comeback Card Investor channel. Be sure to check him out. But you probably already have. Brad, great to see you. Thank you so much. He reminds everybody to hit that like button. I appreciate that. Uh, Ziggy says, Teapot, are you looking at NBA Top Shot and blockchain data? There are several tools in the market that would be awesome for market movers to include that. Have you guys have you guys uh, tossed around any ideas on on bringing Top Shot into the mix on market movers? So I'll give the, like the one minute Top Shot in response to that is like Top Shot in general, I haven't personally gotten into, and I'll, the main reason is I don't have the bandwidth. To get in, I'm just I'm I'm where I work a lot on market movers and stuff, and I'm I'm all in on cards. The Top Shot community, I think it's for good or for bad. I don't know, like pulling some people away from the sports cards and into the into the NFT space. Um, it's just not it's not something I see myself really getting into um, and having a passion for. But some of the other people on our team have, and Jeff has expressed a desire to get NFTs and get top shot into there's other ones cropping up. So the, the short answer would be yes, nothing concrete, more of an abstract desire um, at this point. It, to me, it makes sense. It would be one, one of those things to put on the, on the board as something to, 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 to attack eventually. Uh, but you know, it's called sports card investor, not NFT investor. Uh, not that you couldn't do a parallel type of thing, but 
you know, we'll, I think it's before you start investing too much back end into that, let's see what happens with Top Shot. See if it's got the legs to last a while would, would be what I would think. Uh, Toa Hang says, will there be another virtual sports card con? And what, when do you, and how do you think the next one can be uh, improved upon? So we don't have any plan for this year um, because we're hoping, fingers crossed, that the national will happen. And we plan on going there and we plan on setting up and, and hopefully getting an opportunity to meet face to face with people. Um, we well, well, we may do another uh, another Christmas virtual, you know, another winter virtual at the end of the year. That was a lot of fun. Um, it's a it's a lot of effort. And that's where I, I mean, Kelly shines. I think Jeff gave her a bottle of champagne the first time around, you know, like it's, it's so much planning and work and technical the, if you, if you were part of both of the first two, you'll see the second one was much smoother. We worked out kinks. That's to be expected. The one thing that's missing from it. And I think there could be some brainstorming around and maybe that Beckett industry summit was an idea is like, you miss the, the connection with others and the camaraderie of a card show when it's virtual. So there could be a cool way to, to connect people like better, you know, just to have breakouts somehow, or I don't know how you yeah. wipe it all up, but that would be a lot of fun. Always improving is the key to what you just said, right? Don't, don't worry about what happened. Improve upon the last one. The, the key is just to get started and do something uh, in the first place. So kudos on that card collector. I did not take that as a shot, but I appreciate the comment. And I, I know again that, that my uh, videos can turn people away when you first come to the channel because they are so long, but if you know what's good, you jump in anyway. Uh, just inventory. Is there any way you could allow the subscribers to help you add listings to market movers or does this now? I know you guys, you, in a way you can do that. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, uh, Tyler, but if you want to just take a few seconds. Um, I'll say this, we're looking for opportunities to expand that. Um, and, and maybe one, one thing I'm considering doing is, is creating, um, sort of a, a, a network, maybe a small network by sport of people who want to help vet and control the list, like the way cards get prioritized. It's so much more efficient for us to add cards by set, like to, to put a whole set in or all the, then it is like one card, one card, do this card, do another card. And so, um, it takes, you have to do it precisely. You have to write the query out precisely. You have to vet all the data. Plus, you know, there's backend stuff on our side. So right now it wouldn't be like any member could do it. Um, but uh, maybe more opportunities to, to soft crowdsource that and to get more, more experts um, to make sure. And we have a pretty good bench of people in terms of knowledge of all the sports. Um, I, I would say basketball is my strongest. Football and baseball I'm very familiar with. And then the other sports kind of fall off. Soccer I'm getting more and more familiar with. Um, hammers, he's all in on baseball and he's been studying hockey a ton. He, he likes hockey. He's gotten into it in the last few years and Parker's really into UFC and basketball and football and soccer. So we kind of cover like everything, but we'd still like to have people who are like absolute experts in some of those other sports that we're not to kind of help us fill in gaps on what we're missing in the database and that kind of thing. Great. Thank you. Stealth Shoes wants to know if you guys think printing plates, buying printing plates, getting them PSA slabbed is a good investment. I do not, unless you are talking about, uh, you know, sort of the best players, because printing plates are mostly for player collectors is kind of my view on things. Hockey Hockey wants to know how many cards are added per day. Does Mark Movers average or do you average over the last 30 days? Um, this last month, we've added over 5,000. Uh, which is a huge number in the past. It wasn't anywhere near that. We spent a few months redoing our architecture to enable that type of pace. So now we are adding, I think this last week we added a, a little over a thousand. So um, it's just a, it just depends on the week and what each of us has going on. But um, I'll tell you, I still, that's how I got started. So I was testing and then I got started adding cards. That's what I was doing on a contract basis. And so uh, I love it. It's a, and I, I get to learn while I'm adding them and see what's going on with prices of cards and stuff. So some nights, maybe a lot of nights, uh, I, I sit down after the kids are in bed and I get on and I maybe turn on the last episode of Sports Cards Live and start adding cards. So um, it just depends on what's going on in a particular week. But about a thousand cards a week is what we're doing right now. All right. Peep says NHL is releasing top shelf. He says, just kidding. But I've been hearing hearing rumblings that uh, the NHL and the MLB are uh, are looking into uh, doing what NBA has done with Top Shot. Justin gives a shout out to Kelly and the virtual. 
Uh, Tyson says he thinks cards are for collecting top shots, strictly investing. That's how I feel. Fair feeling for sure. And Steve Menzi, who owns the Sport Card Expo, says in terms of the virtual, just partner with another great virtual expo. And I know you guys have done some work together already. And Steve's been a guest on my show. And I'm a I'm a I'm a lover of what Steve does in terms of the sports, the Sport Card Expo in Toronto, because it's a show that I've been setting up at for 15 years. I encourage everybody who's watching. You know, do check out the next virtual uh, sport card expo. It's on the Hopin platform. It's been there's been two really good ones so far, and this is different than the S than the sports card investor virtual sports card con. This is actually like a more of a card show type of uh, event. And once we can all gather together uh, in person, definitely it will be worth your trip to come to the sport card expo in Toronto. It is the second biggest show in the world after the national. And like I said. I love it. I've been there forever. And so I look forward to meeting a lot of you guys there when it is back up and running. Jordan Riker is volunteering to do Olympic cards and tennis mm -hmm. cards for market movers. Um, okay. Let's now move sort of away from your job and all that and a little bit more about yourself, like your own hobby goals, uh, Tyler. What can you tell us about your own hobby goals? What are you looking to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, I've <laughs> I started out uh, so... A couple of things that are quirky about me, maybe like in terms of my collecting, I don't really care personally about rookie cards, like for my PC. I don't, I, I'm, I've spent a lot of time thinking about um, how people appreciate cards. What do they appreciate about them? What do they look for? And for me, aesthetics is like number one. Like I just want to see a card that looks cool and and closely related to that is photography. Like, so I'll talk about the art and the design of the card, the look and the feel and the photography. And, and then the player, I mean, the player is really important. I wouldn't say it's third, it's like a one C. Um, but because of that, I end up buying a lot of like cards that I like, really like and, and enjoy for players that I also enjoy, but maybe not like the most expensive one, if that makes sense. So I've, yeah. I, I, when I go to like card shows, um, I actually go to card shows like almost firmly with my collector hat on, like not my investor hat. Like I'm, I'm not the guy like racing around the show looking to figure out, like scope out the tables and figure out where the best deals are. I just go to the dollar bin and the $5 bin and just scour. Oh, say you looking for anything? I'm like, yeah, nineties inserts. Like that's because you get an opportunity to find stuff that maybe you can't find anywhere else, or it doesn't make sense to buy on eBay with $4 shipping, but you can snag a bunch of stuff and get a deal on. So I'm always looking for nineties inserts. I I'm addicted to them. And I mentioned like set chasing with that stuff. Um, and then just PC goals. I mean, there was a black label Andre Drummond 2012 gold prism on eBay. So it's the only it's numbered to 10. And I think it was the only one in the world. I mean, that is hands down the best Andre Drummond card in existence. Um, it was way out of my price range on anything that I, I think it was listed for like 10 K or something. And I, it eventually disappeared. I don't know if somebody actually bought it or they pulled it, but it was gone. That would be like a, a grail card, I guess, as you'd call it, you know, a, a high end card. Um, but otherwise I just keep trying to fill in gaps. I have many of the optic and prism rainbows and select and spectra rainbows filled out for Drummond. Um, I've been working slowly, but surely on more, uh, Giannis cards. I'm, I'm a big Giannis fan and I, I like, I like him a lot. And so like I picked up a couple of kabooms, got them graded, um, a year ago, but, um, I don't know. I don't, I, I tend to just spend way too much time on eBay with safe searches looking at different things and then not very effectively prioritizing what I'm going after because it's like circumstantial. So then you get FOMO and you're like, well, do, is this the card I want the most? No, but it's here right now. So I'm going to miss it. It's numbered to 10, you know, you play that whole game. So, um, I don't know. I've got binders. I've got cards. I still need to sort. It's, a, it's a Typical. Healthy, problem. healthy problem. Typical hobbyist, it sounds like to me. Typical collector, you know. Uh, you mentioned spending so, spending so much time on saved searches on eBay resonates with me. I'm I'm checking my saved searches every half hour, sort of thing, twenty four seven, basically. You know, you mentioned that you 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 go for aesthetics first, and then 
the player was kind of one C for me, just to get, you know, just to uh, compare I'm, I'm, I start with player and then aesthetics is second, but in order to even get in the door for me, I won't buy a card. If I love the looks of it, if the subject matter doesn't interest me or the, you know, the player player first, and then it comes down to aesthetics, but I do like rookie cards as well. Just to, just to contrast and this is the beautiful thing about the hobby, Tyler. We all approach it differently, and nobody's right or wrong. We're all unique, which is really cool. A couple comments that came in a little while ago. Corey says, was it hard to do the Christmas? So I'm going to actually take a stab at this because I was a part of the Christmas or the holiday virtual that, that SCI did. And um, my my slot, I think it was on the, the second day. And it was towards the end of the evening. And so I got to see Kelly, your VP of marketing, sent me the, the schedule. And I saw my name there. But when w- the question is, was it hard to do? I must say, it for me, coming in, it was smooth. It was so smooth. But I could tell that the work that went into it behind the scenes, scheduling and planning, this thing was down to the minute, like 8.59. It might have even been down to the second. It was so structured. I thought, wow. They know what they're doing there. So I'm sure, you know what, we're not going to talk anymore about it, but I'm sure it was hard, but it didn't come across like it was. It was very, very smooth. Uh, Still a great question. Uh, Ziggy wants to know, how quickly do you enter new products? Example, how fast will Prism Basketball 2021 show up? So really quick, Tyler, from the product releasing until it gets in, how long is that going to take? Prism will be right away. I mean, right away. That's the biggest release of the year. Um, we try to prioritize it's March 31st, assuming it actually comes out is a big release day. It's select football, it's prism basketball, and it is um, like tops transcendent top, some tops, big, bigger tops releases coming out too for baseball, all three on the same day. So we've got our work cut out for us uh, next week um, to, to start getting those in. So that one should be in there right away. And the nice thing is I mentioned this we're we're, we're sort of working to add in like full checklists is the goal. Like uh, like full checklists or at least like for all the key players, all their variations, like everything. Like you, you want to go in there and if it's been sold on eBay at some point, you find it. Um, for the primary grades, PSA 10, 9, BGS 9, 5, RAW, maybe SGC on bigger sets like Prism. Um, so that one will be out right away. In general, we try to stay really timely. It is – it is a juggling act with, we now have, I think 10 or 11 different sports in market movers. We've added boxing, we have UFC, we've added swimming, we've added tennis, we've added golf, we've added all kinds of stuff. And eventually later this year, maybe we plan on getting non-sports cards, potentially Marvel, Pokemon, Star Wars. Um, So it's always a juggling act. And then you've got, I mean, cards going back a hundred years or more. Right. So, so it's, so it's, it's just a constant juggling act. So we try to get the, the really relevant ones. Like hoops is the first product out with college with a pro jerseys. So we get that in right away. Um, so scale is really scaling is the challenge for a lot, a lot of this uh, kind of stuff. So makes, makes good sense. Okay. Let's change topics now. Collecting versus investing. You know, as I mentioned earlier, so much talk about, about that. What is your, what is your overriding viewpoint on the collecting versus investing dichotomy within the hobby? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's probably not so different from most people's, but um, you know, I heard, so my, maybe it was last year. Sometimes uh, sometime Josh from cardboard Chronicles said something along the lines of, um, you know, uh, people don't collect cards because there were something, there were something because people collect them. So it's sort of like a chicken and an egg thing. Um, and I think I tend to agree with that, but I, I don't, I, the two things just really seem like the same side of, of the, the same coin. Like in the same way, you wouldn't, you wouldn't pay, you wouldn't have paid the price of a card today. Take any card today, a year ago, when it was worth, when it was going for a third of that, like you wouldn't have done that. So the that's sort of like the proof in the pudding that there's an inherent uh, investment nature to any collectibles that you're buying and paying money for, especially something like a sports card, which has no intrinsic value whatsoever. It's a, as my wife says, playfully, you know, you've made a career out of, um, you know, pictures of sweaty men on cardboard. 
you know, like that's, that's kind of mind boggling for me most days when I wake up. Um, but it's something about as, as Parker on my team would say, our, he calls it our monkey brain wants to collect things and men especially seem to be really into collecting and having collections. And there's, there becomes a value associated with it. And most people, most people, uh, that I've talked to collected when they were young, fell out of it, got back into it. Same story as me. And if their whole collection somehow became worthless overnight, I think they'd be pretty stomach sick about it. Like even, even for me, like, I don't know how much I've spent on drumming cards, but if it was like, wow, the whole market crashed, I'd be like, well, that doesn't feel very good, you know, independent of everything else. Like, because you're always thinking of this backstop, like, well, God forbid if I did die in a plane crash or something, you know, um, well, then I'd probably be like, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you should sell my entire drumming collection, like auction it off or something, you know, to help pay for the family. Like that's what's in the back, back of your mind with it. So um, I don't, I, I think there's people who have gotten into this now. And this is maybe where some of the, the you know, so-called haters or whatever come from who are just in it to flip for money. And, and they're, they're, they're jumping in. Maybe they were in sneakers. Maybe they were in anything, crypto, whatever it was. They come into sports cards. Maybe those people need to make money. Like that's what I think about it. Maybe those people um, didn't flourish in conventional academics and um, maybe they lost a job. Maybe they need to make some money. And so if they're going to go stand in line at Meyer or Walmart or hustle around and get to know and schmooze their way in with the, with the stockers and get the, all the product. I, maybe they need that. Like, I don't know. I, I get frustrated when I go to the store and I can't find any basketball cards ever. I'd like to be able to go to the grocery store still and buy, buy basketball cards, but that's not how, it, that's not how it works anymore. Um, but I just think that's a really important piece. Like people kind of build up like a mental, a mental, um, assumption about, even like flippers and investors and what maybe they don't spend enough time like thinking about what their motivations are or how much they might need that money. Or maybe they, you know what I'm saying? Their, their kid needs a surgery or any, any number of things that can happen. So I just, it doesn't really bother me. The hobby has evolved a lot. Uh, obviously um, there's drawbacks to that. I can't get as many cool cards as I used to be able to, which is sometimes really frustrating. Um, or maybe I can buy buying and selling other sports cards and then paying for them. Okay. No, I, I, I hear you. It's really, really interesting perspectives all the way across. Um, quickly bring this one up. I, you know, I got to bring this out and up. Triple V says, I appreciate that triple V. Thank you very, very much. Uh, he then goes on to say, I collect cards because it's bleeping fun. I mean, that's the best reason to collect cards. Um, you know, the, the chicken or the egg comment uh, that Josh on Cardboard Chronicles has said being, you know, I, th I think that as you, as you said, it's people don't collect cards because they are valuable. They are valuable because people collect cards, something to that effect. And I think there's, there's partial truth to that, you know, but, you know, like your wife says, here we are collecting pictures of sweaty men on cardboard. That is what it is on the surface, but it's so much more than that because that that ignores the nostalgia it ignores yeah. connecting with our childhood it ignores connecting with our favorite teams and athletes who have become such a central and important part of pop culture i mean just look at how many people like want lebron to be president of the united states because of of what he's done and and how he has given back to society his his school i forget the name of it wish or something like that whatever it is in cleveland in, in akron done great things. I mean, there's so much more to it than just the, and I agree with you. There's no intrinsic value to the, the, the only intrinsic value of these things are is to stoke the fire. That's all it is, right? That's what it'll do. It'll keep you warm for a split second. That's the only intrinsic value these things have. Otherwise they are simply representations of our youth, of, of what we love. And they are also a, they also are historical artifacts to me, especially yeah. when you go back in time. Ultra modern, it's not, there's nothing historical about them yet. They will become historical, but today they're not historical. But if you're collecting a 1948 Jackie Robinson rookie or a 52 Tops Mickey Mantle or even an 86 Jordan Fleer, these are historical significant artifacts, I believe, 
that we, you know, that are important in society for whatever reason, uh, because, because there were only so many made, they're not making any more of them. And it's just, uh, and it's cool. It's like Triple V says, it, it's effing fun. It is fun. It's fun to know that you can own a piece of the player. And I say that knowing it's not a piece of the player, but it's our, it's kind of the best way to feel connected to the player. I say best way. And then I think that, well, you could buy a game more in Jersey. Now you're even closer, but you know, in the absence of that and how limited those are, it's just a great way to connect to what we love about society and culture and, uh, and sports. So, and the fact that they are in, that they are now basically, you know, assets, investable assets, I think it's just a natural progression of the hobby and the fact that they are historical artifacts and that they are so tied into uh, to these, to, especially when it comes to Hall of Famers, true icons and legends. Like that question earlier about, do you think investing in printing plates is a good thing? Well, only if it's an iconic legendary player, because otherwise nobody really cares. Like unless you are the player collector of Andre Drummond, you know, there might only be Detroit Pistons fans or the Drummond collectors who want that card, knowing full well it may not be investable. And I say that without really knowing that much about Andre Drummond's collecting base. Collect yeah, well, that's well said, Jeremy. The only other thing I'd say about that is it's a really important distinction. And I think it's an opportunity for us at Sports Card Investor. Um, we say it and we say it on live streams and we say it in our picks and we say it in, but I, to reiterate, there, when it comes to investing in sports cards, it's very apparent there are short-term investments, intermediate investments, and long-term investments. And Jeff's done episodes, and he's talked about like rookie life cycle. That's what I call it, rookie life cycle. 95 to 99 to even maybe 100% of the rookies from a particular class eventually go like this. Like nobody – what did I see? I saw – Select gold to 10 Kita Bates Diop uh, rookie card from 2018 listed for like $785 on Com C today. That card can be will will be purchasable four years from now for 20 bucks. Like it's not like don't, and that's where I think it's really important. People don't like over balance portfolio. There's a reason that you keep seeing these ebbs and flows of vintage all-time greats. They're PSA 10 rookies. They're that's where that's like make sure you're you're balancing it out. If you really are, that's just my my, P, my PSA, my public service announcement is like don't just go all in on Darius Baisley because you think he's got like tons of athleticism and upside. Like it's really not what we're about. We want that education to be out there. And um, so anyway, yeah, well well said though. Thank you. Tell me about the internal agreement you guys have at Sports Card Investor when it comes to giving investing advice. Yeah, so we we do a weekly card pick, and um, when Jeff first uh, launched like the membership program, we had two levels. One was Market Mover, which was just access to the tool, and at the time we had a limited suite of features, and then we had Investor level, and what that was was it was access to our members only Discord. It was uh, ac access to our card picks that we do every week. And um, there might've been, oh, and then just like our member live streams and giveaways and stuff like that, okay? We switched that and transitioned as we started adding more features to market movers, we added, we introduced that lower level for just access to the charts. And, and part of the reason we decided we got rid of the investor level is we didn't wanna give the impression that our primary value offering is that we're selling like card pick advice. That's not what we're doing. We're we're give, we're giving access to data that we pull in and we work on and we do use software developers for for other people to make educated decisions on. So that's a, a really important distinction. We're not we're not we're not saying subscribe here to get our five picks every week to buy tell you who to buy. That being said, every Monday we our team our internal team all of us write up. Uh, who are basically buying, selling, or holding, kind of like the episodes that come out. It's separate players. It's just a different thing. More often than not, we're really buying who we're saying we're buying, or we already have. What we don't do in our internal agreement is that we don't sell those cards for two months. Like if I say today or next Monday, if I say, um, like I did last Monday, I'm buying Shea Gilgis Alexander. 
I, you will not see Shea Gilgis Alexander cards in my eBay store for sale within two months because I'm not trying to create hype to then profit from other people going out and snatching cards. It's not even, it's not even concretely my goal. I'm not saying who you should be buying. I'm saying this is who I'm buying. There's a million people you could be buying, but you know, and here's why I'm buying SGA. Here's why, because I think X, Y, Z, this is, and what it does is sort of creates an opportunity for other people, whether they have been in this for a long time or just got into it to see what our thought process is on how we're looking at short-term, long-term intermediate opportunity when it comes to investing in sports cards. And we all have very different approaches and we all look at different sports. Hammer's almost always doing baseball, hockey, or football. I do a lot of basketball and football and baseball. Jeff does a lot of basketball, et cetera. So they just get a, like a, a different lens into different sports and how we're thinking about it. And, you know, circumstantial opportunity, analytical opportunity, it's it's a it's an add-on or a pairing to the data tool, which is the primary value offering to what we're doing. If that makes sense. Yeah. No. Okay. I mean, it's it's important to know. You know, I there's been critics, so it's good to respond and and to have an idea of what the internal agreement, something that probably nobody's heard of before. So it's important that that gets out there. So thanks for sharing that. Okay, we're gonna go to some comments. We are going to be hard stopping this show in about 13 minutes. I want to get through some comments. I want to do the Sports Cards Live 5 and Card of the Day. So I'm going to be skipping several comments from uh, everybody out there, but I'm going to read a few right now. Card Collector says, I'm with that bleeping comment. I collect cards because I love it and always have. I love collecting cards of all sports and sports are the only thing I ever watch on TV. Uh, Ziggy says, it's also an addiction that can sell fun. Playing golf every weekend gets expensive unless you're winning gambling. You're winning gambling against your friends. Very, very true. Triple V, Avenge is my first love and first and foremost, but I appreciate it all. Food and beverage issues, find an aspect you love and dig in. Again, collect what you like. That's what it's all about. Exactly, exactly. MSC, if you're talking about me, thank you very much. If you're talking about Tyler, thank you on his behalf. Chad Shipper, good evening and welcome. Uh, Ziggy, not really, but you never know. Uh, Brad from Sport, uh, Comeback Card Investor says the old SCI videos from a year ago were some of the most valuable videos I saw. Saved me a ton of mistakes. Well, that's very good and important. Very nice. Very nice. Um, okay. I'm going to go. We're going to go by and good. Fire Sports Cards. Hello to you. Hello to you. And all right. Let's move into what I like to call the Sports Cards Live Five. There it is on top of Stop Asian Hate. So Sports Cards Live 5, we're going to go through five questions. It's usually not a, a, a sort of a speed round, but we're going to go as fast as we can. Question number one for you, Tyler. What is your favorite card in your personal collection? Those Drummond Nebulas, definitely. Question number two, what is your top want card right now? Uh, the 2012 Drummond Gold Prism. <laughs> what is? Where is your favorite place to buy cards? My favorite place. Uh, I I buy most of my stuff on eBay. Uh, I found some stuff on my slabs. Gotten on there recently. I like I like buying at card shows. Yeah, me too. Card shows for sure. It's like we all buy on eBay, but it may not be our favorite place. Yeah. It's just most. It's always in the palm of your hand, right? So it's, yeah. it's just so easy. Question number four: If you could change one thing about the hobby, what would it be? Uh, the monopolies on production. I'd like to see more competition introduced again and um and i would love 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 to see panini start printing publishing pack odds pack odds are one of the most fun things to see on a pack i just pulled a card that's one in 1980 packs like it's it's important it helps people realize what cards are actually more rare tops does it uh i don't know why panini doesn't do it but if tops can do it, they can do it. So that would be a big wish list thing for me. Okay. And the fifth and last question, what is your biggest hobby regret purchase or sale? Um, it could also be something you didn't buy when you had a chance. Well, that's, that's actually, I don't know. I did, I did something noble, which I kind of regret. Uh, <laughs> I, I, um, I saw, and I can't remember the guy's exact Instagram handle, but when optic 2019 optic basketball came out, um, the my house inserts were very popular still are they're really cool cards I don't know if you've seen them but they're they're like strong reactions from guys and it's like a got kind of, something kind of lightning in the background says my house and um, they have all the parallels and this guy was posting on Instagram 
that he had all he had collected all the Lucas. So it's Lucas second year. He had the gold, he had everything. He's like trying to get the rainbow. If anybody sees the black, let me know. And a few days later, like the black shows up on eBay. One of one. It was like 850 bucks. Like that's I don't know what that is it a ten thousand dollar card now? I don't know. It's a really expensive card now, a really expensive card. And I love Luca's game. I love Luca. I he and Giannis are like my two favorite young stars now. They're just amazing. And I could have bought that card. I had the funds to buy it. I could have bought it. It was underpriced even at the time. I sent the guy a note, sent him the link, and said, "It's out here." And he bought it right away. And he gave me a shout out on Instagram. And but that is literally probably going to be my only chance ever to have ever had a Luca one of one card like of any kind and a really, really sweet one at that, like a really cool one. So I don't know. I, I did the right, I don't know if I did the right thing, but um, I got to the guy who was publicly chasing the rainbow, so to speak. And he got it. So pretty cool consolation, I guess. Well, very, very, you know, friendly of you really very, you know, community minded. There's people, you know, I know I've got cards that are parts of sets that people want really badly for their player collection but i want you know i feel i want the card just as badly so it's, sorry it's not available but yet i do feel bad about it and i know there's people out there that have cards same thing the, in the opposite way it's just it is what it is when the card is rare one of one especially we can't all we can't all have that one of one so but what I, what i like to say is there's always more cards you know there's always more cards out there for us to, to, to buy and to add to our collection. Okay, let's move on to my PC card of the day. That's where I show a card, in this case two, that relate to my the guest of the evening. And um, in, this, in knowing who uh, Teapot's, two of his favorite athletes are John Stockton and Albert Pujol. So I'm lucky enough to own uh, rookie cards of each of these guys. So I'm gonna show them right now. Bada boom, both PSA nines, the Albert Pujols is the SP Authentic and the 88 Fleer, John Stockton. Great, ah, two beautiful, beautiful cards. I love them. I actually had the pew holes graded myself, the stock that I acquired this way. So I hope you like seeing these, Tyler. Very cool. Yeah, and I I do like both of those ones. And, and the Stockton is like so classic, even though, like I said, like rookie cards aren't my ultimate chase. Both of those I can I can absolutely appreciate. Good, I'm glad you appreciate them. Thank you so much. Okay, let me just uh, go back here for a quick sec. Let's throw that back up there for the end of the show. We are going to, uh, okay, we're, we're right where I want it to be. We want to keep it to an hour and a half. We're going to go about five extra minutes. And then I want to let everybody know part two of the double feature tonight is going to start in 15 minutes. It'll be a brand new broadcast on the Sports Cards Live channel. So you'll need to kind of wait to see that come up live. That will, joining me will be Rodman Martinez. He is an amazing collector from Honduras. He focuses in on Michael Jordan. He's a friend of mine. I'm excited to have him on. So be sure to check that out in about 15 minutes from now. I want to thank everybody who's joined us tonight. Again, I want to thank Tyler, the whole SCI team. I want to thank you, know, you guys for bringing more eyeballs to my channel. If you are new uh, and you came here through the Sports Card Investor team, through Teapot, through Tyler, please do hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I try to bring what I think are the best guest lineup in hobby content to you, introduce to you people behind the scenes so you can actually put a face to the name. If you look at upcoming episodes, Billy Celio from Upper Deck will be March 27th. April 3rd, Tim Getch from ComC, president, sorry, CEO and founder of ComC will be joining me. April 10th, Ken Golden from Golden Auctions will be sitting in teapot spot. We know that's going to be an exciting episode. But one of the things, we know ComC has been highly criticized lately for slow turnaround times and all this. Come meet the guy behind it. Hear it from him himself, what's going on there, instead of just criticizing, spewing hate if you're one of those people, and assuming you know what's going on. Never assume you know what's going on behind the scenes until you've had a chance to hear it from the horse's mouth. And that's what I try to do on the show, is bring you that horse so you can hear it from their mouth. So please do check out the future episodes again. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Hit the thumbs up, all that. Really appreciate it. Okay, we're going to run through the comments that have been uh, trickling in in the last couple of minutes, Tyler. We're going to give you a chance to, to have a final word, and then we're going to sign off until 
Uh, the next episode tonight, if you tend, if you're not going to join us later on tonight, I do wish everybody a great week ahead. Happy Sunday tomorrow and everybody uh, out there to definitely stay safe. All right. Uh, hockey hockey says, can we get an episode of sports cards live with Ziggy versus Tracy Hackler? Yeah, you never know, but probably not. I'd, I'd have to say probably not. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Ziggy, thank you very much. Thank you for the thumbs up. Brent, appreciate you coming on. Hockey, hockey, thank you so much. Got sports cards, as always. Thank you to you. Justin, appreciate having you, buddy. Caught you on Carlos last night as well. Uh, Fire Sports, has any thoughts on lower prices realized tonight at Golden? Jordan 86, Fleer. Yeah, the one thing I'm going to say about the Jordan 86 Fleer to everybody is that, you know, if you think about when they sold for $700,000, the card is still up nine to 10 X since a year ago. So if you think it's a correction, I don't think it is. I think the, I think we had outliers in January and February and we're right where we should be. I do not see as, as a negative sign whatsoever, but again, that's just me. Card collector says, thank you to Tyler. This is awesome. Of course, you too, Jay Lee. Thank you very much. Card collector, 1982, Brian, always great to have you. Tyler over to you. Final words. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I give a shout out to, uh, his account is black Griffin cards on Instagram and he has the, an amazing Blake Griffin collection, the best Blake Griffin collection, all the best one of ones. And um, he and I have become friends over Instagram and he, he helped me early on kind of figure out how to chase down leads on one of ones. And, and just as um, it's, it's been fun, you know, staying connected with him. I also uh, shout out to Adam, the real 27 guy. I just, I always appreciate, He's a guy. When you think about love for the hobby, it's evident, and he's got a great, um, a great publication, Basketball Card Fanatic. Definitely recommend checking that out. It's I'm on the ticker months. right now, by the way, if you want to subscribe to it. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm a few months behind on my subscription only because I just it's setting aside the time to read it, but I plan on getting caught up. And um, Black Griffin Cards does a really cool segment in there called Why It's Art. Very cool. Explains he's, he's an art uh, guy by, by trade, and so um, really cool. And there's a fun account on Instagram, Cardboard Chronicles 2, um, which is all like he just constantly posting inserts and refractors and just he, the guy like absolutely loves collecting everything sports cards. So that's a really fun account to follow. I follow I follow him too. And I sent him a message a few weeks ago or even a month or so ago saying, I love your cards, man. Really great cards. Yeah, it's just like pure hot. I mean, it's it's really, really fun. He's always posting stuff, taking the time. And I appreciate that when people take the time to take nice photos and post them and share them, it's a really, really cool thing. So last thing I would say is, um, you know, there's a lot going on in the world and there's a lot of, um, disagreements. And I, I mentioned it earlier, but like that whole idea of assuming things is, um, that's something that's really near and dear to me. Um, I, I found out I lost a friend to suicide this last week and that was really hard news to find out and um, never knew there was anything going on. And so that's another awareness thing that I just want to bring uh, attention to not to end on a somber note, but there's a, there's a, there's three guiding principles that I, I learned probably eight years ago in my career. And I try to remember them every day in work. And I, and I hope that this speaks to what we're doing at sports card investor it's all around integrity, but the three things are three questions you can ask yourself every day uh, about how your day went. And the first is, did I do my best? Did I do the right thing? And did I treat others the way I want to be treated? It's just the golden rule. And and I'm not like trying to get too philosophical, but like if everybody would really try to remember those things, we'd have a lot less of these tragic events happening, whether it's people losing their lives uh, to others or by their own hands out of desperation, um, the world will be a lot better place. And so um, that's something that's that's really important to me. And uh, I'm, uh, other than that, very grateful, very grateful to have had the chance to be here tonight, Jeremy. This was a lot of fun. Like we said, the time went absolutely by like in a blink. And um, I'm gonna have to listen to the Rodman one uh, maybe tomorrow on, on the after recording because I gotta get to bed and be up for church tomorrow, so. Okay, man. Well, I appreciate that. It's been great having you. You've been a great guest. I appreciate those those final comments. It's just like hockey hockey says. It's it's a great reminder to everybody. Let's uh, let's be let, let's try to be as positive as we can. Even you know, 
in our regular lives and of course within the hobby. The hobby is meant to be a hobby. It's meant to be a, 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 an escape, a, something fun, something that we can turn to when we have other stressors in our life. Uh, my my condolences to you and your friend and 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 that individual's friends and family. Certainly, um, thinking about them tonight, and uh, and that's it. So everybody else, uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, during this episode. I won't say tonight because I'm still going. We're gonna be back on in about nine or ten minutes with Rodman Martinez. Live, he will be streaming live from Honduras. So we are gonna be going over the United States. I'm in I'm in Canada. He's in South America and Honduras, and we are going to be here together. That's the beauty of technology. That's a lot of what uh, what, what the the current state of the world has done is it's it's brought us all closer together virtually, and I'm thankful for that. Card Collector says, thanks, Tyler. Love it, man. Frank wants to say great final remarks, and I certainly concur. Uh, Ziggy says, well said, Teapot. I'd add Jimmy V. Law, learn and think every day. Great advice. Okay, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in to this episode number 86. Episode number 87 comes in less than 10 minutes. We'll see you all there. Have a great night if we don't. Bye, everyone.